Our next topic is about mutually exclusive events. Consider the experiment of rolling a dice. Consider we are rolling a die. So we get the sample space yes which is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. This is the sample space for rolling a die. Now we are considering an event which is getting odd number. Just getting odd number and consider another event B which is we are getting even number. So we have a set A is equal to odd number in the set S. The odd numbers are 1, 3, 5 and the even number set is 2, 4 and 6. Now we can see that the elements in the subset A and elements in the subset B are entirely different. There is no common factors in the two subspaces A and B. So we can say that the event A exclude the event B and vice versa. Then we can say that the event the event A excludes excludes the event B and vice versa. In another words, there is no outcome which ensures the occurrence of A and B simultaneously. So we can say that A and B do not occur do not occur simultaneously. These are the main points. That is, we do not have same elements in both A and B. So, if we take the intersection of the events A and B, we get null set because we do not have any common factors or common element in these two sets. So, we can say that A and B are disjoint sets. So, we can say that A and B are disjoint sets. Or we can say that A and B are mutually are mutually exclusive events. Mutually exclusive events. Since the occurrence of any one of them exclude the occurrence of the other event. If they cannot occur simultaneously, we can say that they are disjoint set or mutually exclusive event. Also, consider the case when A is an odd number, A is an set of odd number that is 1, 3 and 5 and we are having another set B which is the number less than 4. The number less than 4 is 1, 2 and 3. So, in this set we can see that the number 3 is common to both set A and B. So, we can say that 3 element of A and 3 element of B. So, we can say that A and B are not mutually or not mutually exclusive events. So, we define mutually exclusive event as there is no common factors in the two set. Then we can say that they are disjoint set and also 
they are mutually exclusive events next we are going to discuss about exhaustive events for that consider also we are rolling a die so we get the sample space s as 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 31 32 33 34 35 36 37 38 39 40 41 42 43 44 45 46 47 48 49 50 51 52 53 54 55 56 57 58 59 60 61 62 63 64 65 66 67 68 69 70 71 72 73 74 75 76 77 78 79 80 81 82 83 84 85 86 87 88 89 90 having some events a which is the number less than 4 number which is less than 4 which is correspond to a is equal to 1 2 and 3 consider the event b b is the number greater than Five like greater than two, less than five. Greater than two and less than five. So we get the number three and four as the subset. Now consider the next set, which is the number greater than four. So C will be five and six. Now we are going to consider the A union B union C. That is the set one, two, three union. The set three, four union. The set five. Six. So we can see that we, the union is the combination of the elements. So we get the sample space one, two, three, four, five, six. That is the which is equal to the sample space. Yes. So we can say that A union B union C is equal to yes. If we get A union B union C is equal to the sample space A comma B comma C are called exhaustive events. A B C are called exhaustive events. The condition is the union of the set will be. The sample space, yes. The union will be the sample space S. So we can say that the events A, B, C are called exhaustive events. Generally, we can write it as if E one union, E two union, etc. Up to E n events are there, so we can say that the union I is equal to one to n E I will be equal to yes. Then we can say that the events E one, E two, E three, etc. Up to E n are exhaustive. events are exhaustive event also consider the case if e i intersection e j is equal to a null set where i not equal to j then we can say that e i and e j Are pairwise disjoint. Are pairwise disjoint or exclusive. Pairwise mutually exclusive. And if u i is equal to one to n, e i is equal to yes, then we can say that. Then we can say that E one 
comma e2 etc en are mutually exclusive and and exhaustive events since the condition for mutually exclusive and exhaustive events are this that is ei intersection ej will be null set and the combination or the union of that set will be equal to the sample space then we can say that mutually even e2 etc up to en events are mutually exclusive and exhaustive events now we are going to discuss some of the problems regarding the mutually exclusive and exhaustive events here the question is two dice are thrown and the sum of numbers which come up on the dice is noted let us consider the following events associated with this experiment a the sum is even a is the sum is even b the sum is a multiple of 3 c the sum is less than 4 and d the sum is greater than 11 which pair of these events are mutually exclusive okay now we are having four subsets or four events the sample space is is about two dice thrown so we generally we can write it as s is equal to the sample space s we can generally generally write it as elements x y where x comma y which is equal to 1 2 3 4 5 6 so there are 36 6 into 6 that is 36 elements are in the sample space now we are going to define the subset or event a first event is the sum is even so we get so we get a is equal to set even number the sum of the element should be even number so we can write it as 1 1 the sum is 2 then 1 3 so the sum is 4 likewise we can write the remaining elements as 1 5 2 2 2 4 2 6 3 3 and 66 it is the subset a now next we are going to define the sum is a multiple of 3 multiple of 3 means 1 into 1 into 3 is equal to 3 2 into 3 is equal to 6 so 6 3 into 3 is equal to 9 so 3 6 9 are the multiple of 3 so the sum should be a multiple of 3 so we can say that 1 2 so the sum is 3 then 2 1 it is also 3 then we get we want we want the number 6 so we get 1 5 and 5 1 likewise the next number is 9 so 3 3 then also we are having 2 4 which is equal to 6 3 6 is equal to 18 and 6 3 which is which is equal to 9 then 4 5 which is also 9 5 4 which is also 9 and 6 6 it is 12 these are the multiple of 
3. Then the next is C. The sum is less than 4. The sum should be less than 4. That is 1, 1. The sum is 2. 2, 1. The sum is 3. And 1, 2. The sum is 3, which is less than 4. Then the next element is the sum which is greater than 11. That is 12. There is only one element which is 6, 6. Okay. Now we have to find the events which are mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive means there, there are no common factors or common element in the set. So, first of all, we are considering the set A and B. So, A intersection B, that is A intersection B. We can say that there are a lot of common factors are there. there that is, if we take 1, 5, here it is 1, 5. Also, 6, 6 is there, 6, 6 is there, then 3, 3 is there. So, we can say that there is common factors. So, they, we can say that null set. We can say that a and B are not mutually exclusive here, but they are not mutually, they are, they are not equal to null set. So, not mutually exclusive since they are having a lot of common factors between them. So, they are not equal to null set. Then, Similarly, A intersection C. So here also we are having same element. 1, 1 and 2, 1. Okay. So, it is also not equal to 5. It is also not mutually exclusive events. Then, the next is... A intersection D. We are have we, we know that 6, 6 is also present in the event A. So it is also not equal to it is also not mutually exclusive. Then B intersection C also B intersection C we are having common factors. So it is not equal to but this is also not mutually exclusive and next is B intersection D. B intersection D is also having same number, same common element. So, it is not a null set which is also not mutually exclusive. Then at the last C intersection D. Consider C intersection D. There is no common factors or common elements here. So, we can say that the set C intersection D is 5. So, it is mutually, so it is mutually exclusive event. It is mutually exclusive events. So, we can say that only, only C and D are the mutually exclusive even in this problem. A coin is tossed three times. Consider the following event. A. No head appears. B. Exactly one head appears. C. At least two head appear. Do they form a set of mutually exclusive and exhaustive events? So, we are having coin toast three times. So, we get the sample space as S is equal to H, H, H. Three times we are getting head. Then 
एच एच टी देन एच टी टी देन टी एच एच टी एच टी 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 ऑल्सो टी टी एच एंड एच टी एच देर आर एट एलिमेंट्स देर आर एट एलिमेंट्स इन द सेट नाउ वी आर हैविंग थ्री इवेंट्स दैट इज ए इज नो हेड अपीयर्स फ्रॉम द सैंपल स्पेस वी कैन सी दैट देयर इज ओनली वन एलिमेंट दैट इज टी 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 व्हिच कोरेस्पोंड्स टू नो हेड नाउ the next event is b exactly one head appear exactly one head the one head corresponding to this and this and this so there are three elements exactly one head corresponding to t h t t t h c is at least two heads appear at least two heads appear that is h h t t h h h t h this is exactly two head also it is also having one h h at least this is from at least two heads appear there are at least two head here so these are the events a b and c we want to check the mutually exclusive and exhaustive events from this events so consider a union b union c for for checking exhaustive events for checking exhaustive so we are, we are checking a union b union c that is that is having t t t comma h t t and t h t t t h and h h t t h h also h t h and h h h we can say that there are eight elements here eight elements that is which is equal to the sample set that is a union b union c is equal to sample set so we can say that this is mutually this is mutually exhaustive exhaustive event mutually exhaustive event so now we are checking the exclusive mutually exclusive so the for that a intersection b we are having a intersection b so here there is no common element so it is null set and a and b are a and b are mutually a and b are mutually exclusive mutually exclusive then a intersection c a intersection c there is no common factor so it is also a null set we can say that a and c are also mutually exclusive event then b and c checking for b intersection c b intersection c is also having no common factors we are having no common factors so we can say that b intersection c or b and c or also mutually exclusive or also mutually exclusive hence we can say that a b and c are mutually exclusive mutually exclusive and 
exhaustive events. Our next topic is about axiomatic approach to probability. We have discussed about random experiments, sample space, events and some terms and some algebra associated with the experiment and events. Now we are going to discuss the axiomatic approach to probability. Axioms. The word axioms means rules. The word axiom means rule. There are some rules for to find probability of some experiments or events in our day-to-day -day life. Probability theory attempts to quantify the chances of occurrence or non-occurrence of events. That means the probability theory attempts to quantify. Quantify means giving some numerical values. Quantify means giving some numerical values to the chances of occurrence. Chances of occurrence or non occurrence of some events. So, here we are going to discuss some of the axioms or rules which describes the probability of events. The axiom means rules that can be defined as the axioms or rules of probability. Consider S B the sample space of some random experiment. The sample space is denoted by the letter S and P is a real valued function. P is a real valued function and P have the domain the power set yes the domain of p is the power set of s and range and range of p is the interval 0 to 1 that means the probability is having value between 0 and 1 it will will not have a negative value and it will not go for positive or greater than 1. It always in between 0 and 1. So, the range of the probability is close to set 0, 1 which means that greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 1. And the domain of P is simply the set, the sample space. Now, we have to discuss some of the axioms of probability. Axiom means some of the rules. The first one is, for any event E, the probability of event E is determined the letter P of E will be greater than 0. That means the chance of occurrence of E is the probability of E which is always greater than or equal to 0. Then the second rule is about the probability of having the sample space is always 1 which means that the sample space is containing some elements. The probability of having any element suppose is omega 1, omega 2 etc. The value, the probability of any value or any element is, is equal to 1. Then the next rule is the third rule that is if E and F are mutually exclusive events are mutually Mutually exclusive events means E intersection F is always a null set. 
which means that there is no common elements in the set E and F. Then we can say that probability of E union F is equal to P of E plus P of F. That is if we have two events E and F and if they are mutually exclusive events then we can say that there is no common factor between E and F. So it is a null set or disjoint set. Then we can define probability of getting P E union F is equal to separately we are adding the probability of having event E plus probability of having event F. Okay, next we are going to prove probability of pi is equal to 0. That is, pi means null set. Pi means null set. We are going to prove the probability of getting null set is 0. For that, consider an event F which is equal to 5. And we know that E and 5 are two events and which are disjoint. Which are, which are disjoint sets. Disjoint set means E intersection 5 is equal to 0. Then from, then from rule 3, from rule 3, we are having the property E union phi which is equal to P of E plus P of phi. And we know that phi is 0. Phi means null set. Then we can say that P of E is equal to P of E plus P of phi. That is P of phi is 0. Hence, prove. Hence, prove. That is, it is the consequences of rule 3. P of the probability of E union phi, we can given us, it is given us probability of E plus probability of phi. So, hence proved P of phi is equal to 0. Now, we are going to generalize the above axioms as follows. That is, generally, we can say that if S is equal to Tumble space I having elements omega 1, omega 2, omega 3, etc., omega n. Then the axioms of probability are the first one is the probability is the range of the probability of getting an event om omega i is always in between. 0 and 1 where omega i is must be an element of s. That means the probability of getting the event omega i is always like between 0 and 1. The next is the probability of omega 1 plus probability of omega 2 plus etc up to probability of getting omega n will be equal to 1. That is the addition of all the elements and the probability of getting that event is equal to 1. The next one is for any event A probability of getting A will be equal to sum of probability of omega i 
where omega i is an element of A. Since A is a subset of sample space and omega i is the element of A, then we can say that probability of getting A will be equal to sum of probabilities of the elements. The axioms of probability can be understood by the following example. For that, consider the example we are having an example. Here, we are tossing a coin. So, the sample space will be head and tail. There are two outcomes. Now, the probability of getting head is we know that there are two outcomes and only one head. So, out of two, we are getting one head. So, we can say that, that is, the probability of getting head is equal to one out of two. Then, similarly, probability of getting tail is there are two outcomes and only one tail. So, from the two outcomes, there is one chance for getting a tail. So, we can say that probability of getting tail is 1 by 2. Then, from the second rule, we can say that probability of H plus probability of T is equal to half plus half which is equal to 1. That is, here the rule 1 and 2 is satisfied. That is, probability is always in between 1 and the sum of the probability. Omega 1 plus omega 2. The second rule is plus etc is equal to 1. From this example, we can see that the probability of the events is 1. Then, in general, we can write probability of head plus probability of tail which is equal to P plus 1 minus P which is equal to 1 or 0 less than or equal to P less than or equal to 1. Or this is an example of the axioms of probability. Now we are going to discuss one of, an ex one of the examples of axioms of probability. Let a sample space be S. Omega 1, Omega 2 up to Omega 6 are the elements. Which of the following assignments of probability to each outcome are valid. We are having outcomes A, B, Z, D and E. We have to find which one of these follows the axioms of probability. We know that there are mainly two axioms which are the probability value should be in between 0 and 1. The second axiom is the sum of individual probabilities of the events should be is equal to 1. These are the main two axioms which should be followed by each assignment here. Consider the first assignment. Here we are having the probability of getting omega 1 is 1 by 6. Probability of getting omega 2 is also 1 by 6. Likewise, Probability of getting omega 6 is 1 by 6. So, we can write as probability of getting omega 1 is 1 by 6 and omega 2 is 1 by 6 etc. Up to pro probability of getting omega 6 is also 1 by 6. We know that 1 by 6 is about 0.16. So, we can say that probability is 0.16 that is probability lies between 0 less than or equal to P less than or equal to 1 that is 
the first axiom is satisfied here now the sum of the prob individual probabilities of the events will be that is up to omega 6 which is given as 1 by 6 plus 1 by 6 plus 1 by 6 plus 1 by 6 that is we are having 3 6 value 6 by 6 is equal to 1 so the second axiom is also satisfied so we can say that the assignment a satisfies all the two axioms here now we are considering the second assignment so from the data we are having probability of getting omega 1 is 1 and getting omega 2 is 0 and all other values are either 0 or 1 probability of getting any value is either 0 or 1 that is which satisfies the first condition then we can say that the addition probability of getting p of 1 plus probability of getting omega 1 plus omega 2 plus etc up to omega 6 will be given as 1 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 will be equal to 1. So the second axiom also satisfied here. The, so second one is also satisfied. Now we are considering the C assignment C. Here from the data we are having two negative values that is P of getting omega 5 is minus 1 by 4 and omega probability of getting omega 6 is minus 1 by 3. Since these are negative values the first axiom that is 0 less than or equal to or, uh, is equal to 1 that is the probability of getting omega 5 and omega 6 is negative but we are now having only positive values so the first condition is not satisfied so we are the assignment C do not satisfy the axioms of the probability next for the assignment D here the sixth one the probability of getting omega 6 is 3 by 2. 3 by 2 is 1 by 5. Also, it is does not satisfy this condition. That is, the probability is greater than 1. So, it is also do not satisfy. Then, next is probability of... Uh, uh, next is the assignment E then we can say that the first condition is satisfied here here the first condition is satisfied but the sum of the probabilities that is 0.1 plus 0.2 plus 0.3 plus 0.4 plus 0.5 plus 0.6 is equal to 2.1 which is not satisfied here so only the first two assignments that is A and B are satisfied and it is the C, D and E are not satisfied here.